feels wronged by Prince Jabari. Chew out. Stand, please. Did you guys just stop because you stood? Stop sitting. We literally sat down at the same time. <sighs> Whatever. Okay. Hey, rainbows, and welcome to season two, part 75 of the Royal Family series. We are three fourths, three fourths, three fourths of the way through season two of the Royal Family, which is crazy to think about. If you have not already seen season two, part 74 and a half, entitled Alice May's Wrath, which was the last video that I posted, make sure to go watch that now. Stop what you're doing. Go watch that right now because there's about to be spoilers. It is linked below, and this video is going to start like right where that left off. So in this episode, the parents are getting involved, which I think is something that people have been waiting for for a very long time. So we're gonna just play through and see what happens with Alice May Kaleo and the parents. And then we are going to go see Corn Farm for a little bit. I I had something planned, but um, there was an issue, so I'm improvising, but I'll talk about that later. And then we are going to see Evangeline's side of the story of the whole affair situation today. So that will be later in the video. Now, before we get into any gameplay, I want to say thank you to the Ridge Wallet for sponsoring this video. Ridge Wallet is minimalist and the best way to carry cash and cards. There are over 30 colors and styles, including carbon fiber and burnt titanium, which looks so cool. But you guys know me, I love really bright and colorful things. So I got their aluminum tropical wallet and like, look how pretty that is. I can totally see one of the Royals rocking this, especially the Sulani Royals. As I said, it's minimalist. It fits up to 12 cards plus cash. And this has just helped me keep things so much more organized. Plus with the holidays coming up, this would make a great gift for someone special or for someone you know who just needs a little bit more organization in their life like me. And there's honestly so much more to this wallet, but to find out more, you can go to ridge.com slash Ray and use the code MiraRay at checkout to get 15% off until December 7th and 10% off after that. Link is in the description below. Okay, so we're starting off again, right where we left off. This is right after Alice May has slapped Kaleo. Kaleo and Alice May are in the drawing room and I am going to control Kaleo with the control and sim mod actions, control sim. And I immediately, oh, hello. Okay, long list of mean interactions. I think that Kaleo would immediately, is this an option? Can we do this? Oh, wait, where's the ask what Alice May's problem is? Maybe he just, oh, he's just yelling at her, all right. All right, I swear I saw ask what Alice May's problem was, so maybe it just suddenly disappeared. But I think Kaleo would do that. Argue, yell at, sure, let's do that. But yeah, as soon as Alice May slaps him, I, just knowing Kaleo, he would be like, what was that for? And Alice May's like, I don't need to answer that. I really do think that Alice May is just like done. And so I think, so Amir and Jabari, they're on their way home from Henford. They'll be home soon. Cedric, I think was here in the last episode. Like when I was like, hey, Kaleo is here. Like in the last full episode. But because Amir and Jabari were gone all day, they were gonna be at the flower show and Alice May was supposed to be gone all day. I think Cedric would have gone to like Charles and Fallon. So Uncle Charles and Auntie Fallon. I almost said uh, Uncle Fallon. And like hang out with them and his cousins, Felix and Oh my gosh, I can't talk. Felix in Cambridge. But anyway, Cedric's not here. I needed to like, I need to protect his innocence. He does not need to be here while all this drama is happening. He has no idea what's going on. Oh, Benji's here. Benji. Oh, okay. No, he, oh, no. Oh, he read out. He zoomed by. Oh my goodness. By the way. Okay, so, well, first of all, one, I need to introduce Finn, the bodyguard to you guys, because I've never actually shown him in an episode, but he's been in several story posts and the machinima. I actually never had him in my my safe, like in the main safe file until today. But he's making sure nothing happens to Alice May. But as you can see, there are some renovations done to the Windenburg Palace. So now we have, this room used to take up this entire space, this main, like the big drawing room. And this used to be like, I think there was a card table in here. So I made some changes. I would love to keep renovating. Like I need to renovate the throne room and this room is good. That's the tea room, but the rest of it kind of needs to be renovated a bit. But the main reason I did did this was because I knew for the machinima, like I had a picture of exactly what I wanted. I should probably, I think I have Finn posed currently. So to not break, oh, that's probably not the right pose. I was gonna have an animation, but then I realized I don't have any animations in my game currently in my mods folder. Um, So he's just frozen, but I didn't wanna like break the bodyguard illusion. So he's just standing there. We'll see more of Finn at some point. For now, he's Alice May's bodyguard. That's all you really need to know. Anyway, I think Kaleo is still trying to like, He's trying to apologize to Alice May because now he's like lost 
all the rest of his friends, and he wants Alice May. To, like, Alice May has usually forgiven him in the past. I don't know why he would think that she would after what he did. But Galeo, I can just, there will be story posts of this, but like saying that he tried to, oh, you know what? No, let's do this. Can you apologize? And what will happen? Will she accept your apology? Because your guys' relationship is so low. He's just very back and forth as usual. You know what makes me happy right now? That they're standing and arguing. <laughs> because after the last episode, when they kept sitting, I was like, oh my gosh. It breaks the illusion. It makes it less dramatic. Oh, but yeah, this is the um, room. Oh, oh, I think he tried to apologize to her. And Alice May is like, um, no. I don't think like she would be yelling as much as she is here right now. I think what I'm picturing, obviously you guys will see it later, but like what I'm picturing is him like trying to apologize and Alice May just being like, no, I'm done. I'm done with this. I'm done with you treating me like this. I, you're just, no, 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 no. I, oh crap, I forgot. Okay, so as you guys can see, I've been doing a lot of throwback pictures for Winnenberg specifically because I knew we would be here. And I've been trying to put the pictures around the palace. For some reason, this one disappeared and I don't know why. I took this one a while ago. That is Henry, Cora, and Anna as kids and a toddler. And then that's Henry with toddler Alice May in like the baby preset. She looks so freaking cute. And then William as a toddler. And then this one is Amira, May, and Kellen as kids, and Alice and Henry. So I just wanted, you guys will also see like random paintings here. I have not filled out everything and I still needed to, to decorate the palace with paintings and stuff. So you guys might see some random ones, but I'm trying to work on filling it as much as possible. Anyway, did you try to apologize to her yet? Are you still arguing, Cleo? You are doing a very bad job. I, I want to see though, I want to see her reaction if he tries to apologize to her. I don't know. They're just both. Both enraged. They're both pissed. I don't know what else there is to do. Anyway, I don't think the apology went well. It's still an unpleasant conversation. I kind of think Alice May would just walk out. Like she's had enough and she's not gonna let Cleo get to her any longer. So let's see. Let's have you go. Let's, yeah, just leave. Alice May, you don't have to, let's, you don't have to talk to Kaleo anymore. You're done. You've had enough. You're, yeah, you're out of here. Kaleo would probably, oh, oh wait, oh my God, wait a minute. <laughs> Legit scared me. Oh my god. Cleo's gonna walk right into this. He's gonna walk right into this. Okay, but like Amira and Jabari would be pissed right now. I should let's let's make that happen. Okay. Oh, Jabari's yelling at Kaleo. Oh my oh whoa, okay. I forget how like deep Jabari's voice is. And Amira too, Amira's yelling at him too. Oh my gosh. Also, yes, they changed from the flower show. I think they would change. Okay, they're arguing with Kaleo. Also, I think Amira had like a fairly high relationship with Kaleo before. Like it was like acquaintances or something. Okay, so not that high, but like higher than Jabari. Jabari had like a negative 10 relationship with Kaleo. Also now Jabari and Kaleo. Okay, oh, it's an abhorred conversation. Aww. Sentiments about Jabari. Wait, wait, wait. Hurt feels wronged by Prince Jabari. Being around Prince Jabari will remind Prince Kaleo of that pain. Um, okay, so I saw comments in the last episode, the, the full episode, about Kaleo feeling deceived and how that was like actually so deep because with Kaleo and like how manipulative he is, he just like always, like he always plays the victim card. So he always thinks that people are like, like he, he just always plays the victim. And that is what I am taking this as, as well. I really don't think Kaleo would yell back, would yell at Jabari and Amira. Like he's, I don't think he would go that far. He knows better than to do that. Um, he also has pretty much his whole life just put up this front for most people. So that's why no one really saw Kaleo for what he is and for how he treated Alice May. He really only was that around Alice May, but Jabari always like sensed it a bit. I kind of think when they were kids, I don't know if I've talked about this in an episode, but I kind of think when they were kids, I'm gonna have him yell more. You know what though? No, I'm going, oh, Jabari is pissed. I'm also surprised that Jabari and Amira aren't angry yet because they're having this argument with Kaleo and usually that spurs the the emotions. I don't know, maybe they can, I, well, I don't know. They'd be angry. Alice May still has a bit more to tell them, but they'd be pretty angry. Anyway, I think they are going to tell Kaleo that he needs to wait. They're gonna talk to Alice May and they're gonna call Kaleo's parents. So I'm gonna have Jabari 
call Leilana and Dean, who right now, very shortly before, has just encountered Evangeline at the flower show, which I, uh, the story posts are linked below as usual. I'm not going over them because I talked about them in the half episode. Hi, Benji. Are you zooming by? Are you just alerting the whole palace still? Okay, bye. Okay, but I think Jabari or Amira, one of them, will call Leilana and Dean. Okay, so I found Leilana and Dean. I guess I, if I can do an event, uh, invite to hang out on current lot. If I can do an event, it's like parental meeting. I totally would, but let's just invite both of them over. I don't know how long this is gonna take. Let's see, Jabari's angry. Ling oh, it's lingering anger. Okay, probably from the argument with Kaleo. Watch, they're so, she's so tense. Alice May is tense. I think Finn is still standing here frozen in the pose that doesn't really fit him very well. <laughs> and I didn't really have another pose to give him. I at least had to like have him here to show you guys that he's here. I think they would. Okay, so here's the thing. I think they would tell, oh my gosh, oh, the fire on the screen. I'm turning this off. Wait, Benji's still zooming around. He's literally just making laps around the palace. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay, I think that Kaleo would be told to wait in the drawing room. Maybe this drawing room. <gasps> I've never seen the dogs go under the couch. Did you guys see that? <gasps> I didn't know that was a thing. That's so cute. Okay, anyway, sorry. Um, I think Kaleo would be told to wait in here. <laughs> and like, what is he gonna do? Say no? <laughs> Look, Kaleo put himself in this position from the beginning, but also because he decided to come over to Alice Maze on Jabari and Amira's terrace. Territory. And I think Kaleo would just um, sulk, I guess, sulk in anger and irritation and just, you know, in Kaleo. Amira, how long does it take to tell Leilana to come over? Maybe she's explaining things. She looks so tense. She has to call both of them over though. That's the thing. I will probably though, wait, no, does she need to call Dean too? I could just teleport them here. That would be easiest. I just wanted to give them time because I think while they're waiting, Alice May is going to fill them in on like the rest of the stuff with Kaleo because all they really know is about Caspian. But I think Alice May will tell them like, everything else too, which I don't think will be in a story post because it would be very repetitive of like the post with Molly Grace, but I'll have other posts with Alice May and Amira and Jabari. Okay, she called them. Queen Leilana will be right over. I'm so excited. Uh, now she's calling Dean. Technically, she wouldn't have to call Dean, but Kaleo, why don't you, don't be mean to Amira. Stop, she's the queen. You know better. He knows better. He wouldn't. All right, Kaleo, sit here. So also, Leilana and Dean, mostly Leilana, like she's acquaintances with Dean, but Leilana and Amira Mira have like a fairly good relationship. Also like their kids are friends. They're, they've been friends their whole life. Although neither of them really knew what was going on. Um, I think I've mentioned this before though. Cause I think most of you guys know Leilana and oh, sorry. Finn is like <laughs> making me laugh every time. Cause he's so frozen. Um, but Leilana and Naya are best friends. Of course we saw Naya in the story post with Leilana and Dean. I think I've mentioned before that Naya didn't really like Amira growing up. And I think Le like Leilana was Probably like Leilana and Makai are close. They're cousins. They're close. They're like brother and sister. And of course, Amira dated Makai. So I, I think Amira and Leilana have always kind of been acquaintances, but I don't think they've ever been like buddy buddy like Naya and Leilana. Um, after you guys are done, so uh, Kaleo, are you sitting over there? You are. Sit there. Yes. Okay. Jabari and Alice May and Amira, whenever you're done, come here too. But I think Leilana and Amira have always been on good terms. And now, of course, there's this whole mess of a situation with Alice May and Kaleo. And then we have Evangeline and Dean. And Evangeline is Amira's stepmother. She's only like five years older than her, but she's her stepmother. Um, Amira, when you're done, come here and join the conversation. I want Alice May to tell them everything and vent, but I don't know if she can vent if she is angry. Discuss angry mood, sure. Dean, okay, Dean will be right over. Wait, okay, now I want you guys to sit for this conversation. I mean, well, I guess they don't have to. I like how they just hugged. That was super sweet. Um, okay, they they hugged and now are sitting back down. <laughs> Amira is so stressed. She is so stressed. Oh, Princess Alzheimer's empathy is in range to earn compassionate. Cool. I think she already would have had a high empathy level. Like she's probably got one of the highest out of most of the characters. But yeah, okay. Alice May is telling them, she's filling them in what's going on. So she's telling them everything. She's telling them how, I think, did I finish? the sentence before how Jabari like I think had an idea and maybe had overheard things when they were kids like maybe one or two comments that was a little bit like mm, I don't like the way that he said that to my daughter that kind of thing also Jabari was engaged to Azara and Azara manipulated and gaslighted the crap out of him um but we do need to wait 
for Leilana. And is that, Dean, are you jogging? Dean is always, is that your, wait, hold on. Is that your hot weather outfit? Okay, I don't think him and Leilana would have had time to change. Is Leilana here yet? Or is it just Dean? I actually didn't expect them to get here so quickly. Where, is the back door the front door? This should be the front door. Set as front door. Oh, you do not have to go all the way around, sir. Leilana is here. Oh, okay. Now they're in the outfits, um, even though they're, they're, we'd come in through the front, but that's fine. I am actually going to control them. Let's do control any sim mod. Oh, <clears throat> excuse me, my voice. Control sim. I think I'm getting too excited. <laughs> okay, they are here. Dean is bored. <laughs> Leilana's tense. Oh, right. Okay. Festering bitterness. That that's from that's from the last episode. Also, yeah, heartbreak fueled fury. So Leilana's already feeling all these things. Actually, I, I did realize I didn't go over the story post with them in the half episode because it wasn't mentioned, but they're also linked below. It's basically what we went over in the actual episode. Um, so we're gonna have the so I just we're okay, I'm gonna just set everyone in their place. Okay, this makes the most sense seating-wise to me. If they get up, just remember they sat here. I, okay, so, uh, oh, no, no, going too fast. Um, Jabari and Amira are going to be telling, just filling Leilana and Dean in on everything. To be honest, I don't think Dean would contribute much to this conversation. I think it would mostly be Leilana, and I think she would be horrified to hear what Kaleo has been doing to Alice May. They're also telling Leilana and Dean what Kaleo did to Caspian, which I feel like, or I, both of them, especially Leilana, I I feel like they would both be horrified. One, because I just feel like that would be horrifying to find out your child did anyway. And then two, because Nia used to be Leilana's royal advisor like years ago and they were pretty close too. So, oh my gosh, Leilana is probably just like angry and shocked and just, I feel like a ton of emotions plus on top of everything else that's going on with her and Dean. This is a good thing girl is strong because this would be so overwhelming for anyone. And I'm sure she is overwhelmed too, but she's very good at keeping calm and collected. Also, so Kaleo is like sad right now. And I, I can imagine his, his mood would shift when his parents would get there. Like he, he's been found out. They know now what's going on. They should have known a while ago, but they know now. So I can really just see, oh my God, look at Dean's face. <laughs> Everyone's so tense. Like, look at them. Amira and Jabari, so tense, so angry. Oh, I meant to recolor Amira's dress and make it darker, but I'll do that later. But they're so tense and so angry. Um, Alice May, I, oh, you know what though? Okay, Ben, Benji. Oh, Benji is asleep in the throne room. He's all zooming out. That is so freaking cute. This is for the family management mod, by the way, if anyone's wondering how I am about to control Benji. But I, he, he would be, I, I don't think he can do this, but he, he would, like Alice May would probably be, be hold, I'm sorry, I can't talk. Alice May would probably be holding him for comfort. This is a lot for her. There's so much that has happened in the past 24 hours slash this whole day slash this whole weekend. It's a lot, it's a lot. All right, Benji to the rescue. He's sitting next to Alice May. I would like her to be holding him, but I don't think I can do that. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh yeah, Al so Alice May is having to sit here too. Kaleo of course is pouting and sulking and probably wouldn't be saying anything. And I think th this is true. Like uh, Leilana would be doing most of the talking. Uh, like out of Kaleo. And Dean. I just, no, 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 Kaleo, don't. No, no, you are not allowed to get up. What are you about to do? Uh, give yourself a pep talk. Stop it. Just go sit here. Sit back down, sir. God, Dean just looks so not a care in the world. Why, <laughs> why does he look like that? It looks very weird. But I think Jabari and Amira would tell them that they don't want Kaleo near Alice May anymore. He's not invited to the palace anymore, the Winterberg Palace anymore. And I think Leilana would like, I think she would understand. Also, she's kind of. Like she's just in a very tough situation right now with the whole thing with Evangeline and Dean too. So yeah, Kaleo is banned from Windenburg and he's not allowed near Alice May anymore. So yeah, they're gonna have this talk. And then real quick while, so while they're doing this, I'm gonna try to, oh no, they're leaving. Oh, okay, they're, never mind, they're leaving. Oh no, oh wait, hold, oh wait. Uh, oh no, they sat back down. Oh my God, she's yelling at Kaleo. Like that is yelling at Kaleo, guys. Dean's doing nothing at all. <laughs> like, jeez. Okay, so I wanna keep this as brief as possible. I don't mean to bring down the mood, but I think it's something very important to say. Talking, just trigger warning, this is gonna talk about victim blaming and gaslighting, which I know I know we're talking about a bit now, but just a little bit more in depth. So I wanna say this because some of the comments saying that Alice May was stooping to Kaleo's level by slapping him in the face and that she was continuing the cycle of abuse by slapping him in the face, which is if, if Alice May was continuing the cycle of abuse, uh, so Zoe said this very well,
well. If she's continuing the cycle of abuse, then that means that she is, like, she, the victim, would become a, the abuser to a new victim, which is not the case. Basically, like, the term being used for blaming her for this is reactive abuse. So reactive abuse is when a victim is pushed into lashing out at her, at her or their, their abuser, whether physically or verbally. This is often done to claim that the victim is actually the abuser, which is a form of gaslighting, and that's obviously not the same thing as abuse. So he also said, I think any pressure for victims to stay cool, calm, and collected when facing abuse is deeply unfair and disrespectful. Abusers are not owed that. And also comparing years of emotional abuse and sending her boyfriend slash, you know, Caspian to the hospital and comparing that to a slap as the same thing is honestly very offensive. And I just, I think this is important to say because I want to keep this, I've said this before, I want to keep this a safe community. I want people to feel comfortable and safe here. And it is very common for people to go through. Maybe not like to the same extent, but some people to the same extent or worse. Um, it's very common for people to go through what Alice May has been through with Kaleo. It's more common than you think. And expecting her to stay cool and collected, which she has been for years. Alice May has tried to stay calm for years and try to not let it get to her for years. And the fact that she's finally standing up for herself, she's not stooping to Kaleo's level by doing so. So I, I'll play so they can like talk and stuff. But you, like you guys, I've said before, you guys are welcome. I, I understand if you dislike a character, if you like a character, you guys like, you can like Kaleo and believe in him as a character and believe that he'll grow. But the bottom line is, and the point is, what Kaleo is doing is wrong. It's not okay. You do not treat people like that. And he is going to have to, like last episode and right now, this is only the very beginning, like a little bit of the consequences he's going to pay for this. And we'll like see it throughout the series, well, kind of while we might even start focusing on a few other things. But anyway, I think that's all I had to say about that. Um, all right, so y'all are leaving. Let's let's get up here, everyone. Everyone stand, please. I think that Leilana would tell Kaleo to go wait in the car with his dad. Oh, hi, Benji. <laughs> um, they're they're all kind of walking out of here. Alice May, Alice May and Jabari. Well, okay, so they're they're about to go get ready to go back to the hospital to see Caspian. They might pick up. Well, no, I, I think Cedric should stay with his uncle and aunt and his cousins. So I think Leilana would tell Kaleo to go wait in the car with Dean and Dean gives her a look like, why? And she's just like, just go. And oh, man, oh, I can make him. No, no, don't go home yet. Okay, so Leilana's doing this because I think she's going to ask Amira if she can have a private conversation with her. Um, And Amira's like, sure. And then she's just telling Alice May and Jabari to go ahead and get ready to go to the hospital to see Caspian. And then... Leilana. Oh, hi, Benji. Go with your, go with your mother, Benji. Okay, I was gonna have, uh, I was gonna have Leilana talk to Amira about this, but, um, complain about problems. Why do you have to stand for this? I actually want you to sit down for this. Ye oh, you're just, oh, okay. It's, it's an important down, very down low, wait, no, very top secret information. Something that Leilana doesn't want to get out. She's, oh my god, oh, wait, this reaction. Okay, so I think Leilana's telling Amira about Evangeline and Dean. And I think she's doing this and she's telling Amira because, I mean, she's already told Told Evangeline to stay away from Dean, but in case she doesn't, I mean, Leilana wants to keep this as um, handled on the down low as possible. Also, that Colin's going through that bookcase. I need to fix that. But like that reaction from Amira, her being like, no. Okay, so Leilana's telling Amira about Evangeline and Dean. Um, and we're gonna come back to that later. For now, I think we need a break from the drama <laughs> and from talking about this. So let's go see Corn Farm. Okay, so we are now at Sylvan Glade with Cordelius and Ellis. Uh, it's so pretty here. I'm like, it's so pink. I have my reshade on, so like obviously it's making things more vibrant, but this place is already so vibrant and it's gorgeous. I actually haven't seen, I have like a terrain texture mod. I'll link it below, um, but it I haven't seen it in Sylvan Glade, so it looks really cool. But there, we're gonna have them have a picnic because I've never, we had a picnic with Kazme after the debutante ball, but that was a mod. And then Henford on Bag, or not Henford on Bagley came out. Um, Cottage Living came out and it came with a picnic basket. It, like literally the epi like right after the episode came out. So I want to actually try that picnic basket, the one that comes in game. Um, so we're gonna have Cornelius and Alice have a picnic here. Oh, you can so you can set up the picnic. I did put food in here, like I packed food in here. So they're they're cloud casing currently. Sure. So the reason we're here, I okay. Here's the thing. I had something planned with a mod with the Woohoo Wellness mod because I think are you uh, Cornelius are gonna join this picnic? Um, because I wanted Corn and Alice to like I think they're ready to have kids and I wanted them to have a conversation about it because that's something that comes with the mod. So if you don't know the Woohoo Wellness mod, there's 
so much to it. I'm gonna link it below, but here's the thing. Um, it didn't work in my game. I don't know if anyone else has had this issue and knows how to fix it, please let me know. I put it in my game. I There were some mods it listed that would conflict and I made sure that like either I didn't have it or I had my risky woohoo set to 0%, which it's always on 0% because apparently that conflicts with it too. And I even took out some of the extra stuff, but when I downloaded it, I when I would click, like, you know, you have this options come up when you click on a sim, nothing would show up. So I couldn't do anything, like any interaction whatsoever with the Woohoo Wellness mod. So I was like, well, crap, but I still want to see Corn Farm and just pretend they're having this conversation. But yeah, apparently they do this thing where they like, you can have a conversation and say you're like ready to have kids. Prince Corn is family oriented, which is ironic considering like just him growing up with his family. But he's calmed down now. He's a calm down corn because of Ellis. Thank you, Ellis. Can you guys, you guys want to eat? Maybe grab a serving. So we're going to pretend they're having this conversation conversation because I still wanted to see them. But also the thing with the who, the Woohoo Wellness mod is you can have surrogacy. You can have so much more other stuff, but what I was getting it for was a surrogacy and for the fact that I can talk to, you, you can talk to your partner about being ready to have children. Um, There's so, so much more to it. The people that I know who have it, who use it, they said that it just adds so much more to pregnancy in the game. So I, I mean, I would recommend it, but I can't play it on my game and I don't know why. It's, it must be conflicting with something. I don't know. Yes, if anyone knows, please tell me. But the thing is, from my understanding for the Woohoo Wellness mod, you can have a surrogate, but you can't have a donor and a surrogate be a separate person. So in Corn Farm situation, I've mentioned this before, I think I mentioned this for their wedding episode. Most likely I was thinking that they would talk to a distant relative of Ellis's to be a, the donor because I, and I, I say distant because uh, after, with Ellis's backstory, after his mother died, um, he, he went to go work on this farm. So like, I was like, it can't be a close enough relative to where he would go stay with them after his mother died. It would have to be like a very distant cousin probably. But also because they are royalty, they would definitely hire a professional surrogate to carry the baby. So either way, I would have had to like replace the child. <laughs> like it would have been two different Sims, the donor and the surrogate. Um, but I think the surrogate is the one that like the genes come from and it would have been different from the donor. So I, I yeah, this is, a, this is a bit confusing and there's only so much we can do in the Sims. But anyway, that's what I want to do for Corn Farm. That is the that is the story for Corn Farm. That is what we are going to pretend happens. Meanwhile, in The Sims, I'm gonna have to do some background work. But hopefully, I can actually get the mod to work because I I don't know. I like I, I'm gonna otherwise I'll have to use cheats to like yeah I, I would have to use cheats. But anyway, Corn Farm's talking about having kids very soon. They want to have kids very soon. Um, Elon and Natalia are probably gonna have their baby in the next episode. I mentioned in the last episode that they're pregnant. And, okay, I did this little bonus story post, like very last minute. Um, If you guys saw the very latest story post I did, it's also linked below. Samaria and Bellatrix. Bellatrix is pregnant, so Samaria and Bellatrix are, are expecting, and so is Makata and Kimmy. I, me I know I've mentioned Makata and Kimmy are having a baby and I was going to keep it, like I was gonna postpone it for story purposes. This is not actually the story I was going to postpone it for. Um, That one's gonna happen a lot later and I figured I could either, I can make it work. I'll, I'll figure something out. I'll, I'll either do it as a flashback or like a second child or something. I don't know. Anyway, theirs is gonna go along with the timeline of the story, like with Alice May and them. So here's what I'm gonna do. I've mentioned before with the pregnancies and the babies going on, like with Osiris, like growing up, but like the fact that the timeline hasn't gone that far with Alice May. Are you guys eating? Um, the timeline hasn't gone that far with Alice May's story. Um, I was just saying, and I told you guys, like the timelines aren't gonna match up for that. I would have to keep a specific thing for Alice May's story. Um, so just, just ignore that. Uh, However, since Kimmy and Bellatrix and Severian and Makana, they're all part of Alice May's story. They're, it's just this one big story. I call it Alice May's story because that's the easiest way to put it. They're gonna follow the timeline because it's actually gonna work with the story. And like, I, which is a mess because of what's going on with their families. Anyway, in the next episode, a couple weeks will have passed. So we're not actually gonna see Alice May in the hospital with Caspian. Um, so Caspian's surgery went well. We'll see that in a story post. I don't show him in episodes being injured because like, I 
I, I don't have to keep him in a pose or animation or something. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But a couple weeks will have passed and I'll explain to you guys what has happened with Subani Royal Family, Windenburg Royal Family, and Caspian and all of them in those couple of weeks. And then after that, I'm going to do like a eight, seven month time skip, something like that. Multiple month time skip. I just, I wanted to give you guys a heads up so you know what's coming. Anyway, okay. Porn Farm's talking about having kids. But yeah, I'm excited for them. They're ready to be parents. I'm like trying to hold off as much as I can to have everyone else having their kids because otherwise that group of kids, that group of teens and, and kids is going to be huge. Like it's going to be bigger than like Cordelia's and Arya's and Genevieve's and, and like that whole group, like Adric, all of them. That group was pretty big. And this one's going to have more. There's going to be more kids in this one. So I got to hold off as much as I can, but I get too excited. It's too exciting. I just want to see their children. But yeah, anyway, this picnic basket's cute. Set up picnic, put in inventory, pack boots. I mean, essentially it's the same thing. Also, you guys have a sentiment? Yes. Sentiments about Prince Corn. Picnic bonding. Oh, yeah. Hey, Prince Ellis had a lovely picnic with Prince Corn. <laughs> I just call him Corn now. That's just officially his name. Good food in nature can bring everyone together. That's sweet. I'm glad they get the sentiment for that. Okay, so this was nice. This was a nice, relaxing, calming point in the episode. Now we're gonna get back to some drama. Okay, so now, ooh, I wish I could, oh, I wish I could recall. I don't think I can do anything about those. I was gonna say, I wish I could make those the Windenburg flags. By the way, uh, next video, one of the upcoming videos I'm going to have people People requested the uh, background information about like what the flags mean, what each of the kingdom flags mean that I showed in episode 74. So that will be coming soon. Okay, so Evangeline was, as mentioned in the story post, she was staying in Henford for the weekend. It's it's Sunday now, so I think she would come back home because she's got, she has some stuff to do during the week. But now Amira's here, she's just found out, I think she would be angry. Can I make her angry? Well, let's go with tense for now. Let's. Uh, she might get angrier as the conversation progresses. Um, so this is the second, or not, this is the summer home. There's some memories here for those who have seen, I think it was towards the end of season one. Uh, we were here quite a bit when Amira was younger, when Bellatrix and Charles and Diana were babies, they were here. And I've been, oh, you need to knock on the door. Yeah, Amira is like coming in, just finding out this information about Leilana, coming to talk to Evangeline about it. So yeah, basically Leilana is hoping that Amira can help to, neither of them want this to get out. Uh, she's just kind of hoping Amira can help make sure that Evangeline doesn't see Dean anymore. Uh, so I started making some renovations to it. The, I, I've got a lot more work to do. If you guys remember, all of these were like these windows and it looked very contemporary. I wanted to, to uh, this, this palace needs a makeover. I'll just say that. Ignore everything else. <laughs> it needs work. Um, but I have the room that we're in renovated, kind of. I just added like the custom content furniture because now I have so much more build them by CC. Also, I, this is just reminding me, someone said this, I think on a stream or on a comment. And I'm so sorry if I, I don't remember who exactly said it. You're welcome to comment if it was you. But they said that each of these violins, cause these were there before, but like that each of the violins represent Henry's six kids. So we got Amira, Kellen and May and uh, Bellatrix and Charles and Diana. And I was like, way to make me cry. Okay, anyway, where's Evangeline? Is that you? Yes, that's you. Okay, hello. Evangeline, come downstairs. They're like, um, ma'am, the queen is here. Go downstairs. Hopeless romance. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why can't Dowager Queen Ava let these romantic feelings go? Should she even try? Is that from the interaction with Dean? First of all, I don't know if you, did I show you guys this last time? Um, how high Dean and Ava's romance and friendship is. Also now she's negative romantic, uh, not romantic. <laughs> A negative relationship with Leilana. <laughs> Plot twist. Okay, so Amira has arrived. Mean? Mm, accused of spying. Oh, Amira has the paranoid trait, which is also a big reason why she won't let Alice May and Caspian go public, but th that'll be a situation later on. I don't think she would outright yell at Ava. Well, hold on. Come into this room because I decorated it. Okay, so she's arrived. Amira, I th I think she would be like, I just talked to Leilana, Queen Leilana. Please tell me that it's not true that you're seeing D. I think that's what she would say. Probably like a lot more stern than what I just did, but you know, but there's nothing for that. So, oh, well, argue about parenting. Hold on, that's gonna come up in a second. Okay, so anyway, I, I think Ava would like hint that yes, that's true. And immediately Amira is like, how could you do that? Like, 
like, uh, besides the fact that, okay, there we go. Of course they're sitting, why not? Um, I would imagine them standing, but the, besides the fact that that is the queen, uh, like we have an alliance with Sulani. You're sleeping with the queen's husband, Leilana's husband, you're sleeping with Dean. Um, besides all that political mess, how can you do this to Beltrix? That is your daughter's, uh, not brother-in-law, your daughter's father-in-law. Like, I think Amira is just livid. I'm gonna make her livid. She needs to be mean. Or not mean, sorry. She needs to be angry. Chew out. <gasps> Enraged, Amira. Stand, please. But Ava's arguing back here. So, I think Ava is trying to explain herself. Did you guys just stop because you stood? Argue. I mean, I, yeah, sure. I guess argue about pop. Stop sitting! We literally sat down at the same time! <sighs> Whatever, okay. Rant logically. Wait, hold, I I like, I don't know if this is what this means, but this is what I'm getting from it. Rant logically. Just saying like, listing all the things wrong with this to Ava. Trying to talk some sense into her. Like, are you kidding? Anyway, I think Ava's probably like arguing back with her um, and just probably saying, trying to maybe explain herself. Um, not, not trying to make excuses for Ava, but I'm gonna tell you guys what's going on. So, and this is what Ava's explained to Amira. I've kind of hinted this in the story post and I did like a little, like extras thing on my Instagram stories and my highlights about this story post specifically because I like packed so much information in there. So we know that she, of course she has like her grandchildren and Leilana mentioning that Ava hasn't been at events much because Ava still has important duties as Dowager Queen. Even though Henry died, like she still has very high standing. Hold on, hold on. Okay, so this is what I said. I'm sorry, I should have had this out earlier. So Leilana wasn't just being passive aggressive. This is about the story post, by the way. There was some truth to what she said. Ava hasn't attended as many royal engagements for the past several months. This is partly due to her wanting to spend more time with her grandchildren and partly since Alice May has been taking on more royal duties recently. And so what I explained about Alice May, so this is the rules here with this royal family. When Alice May turned 14, she started a company, and she's 15 now, but she started accompanying either her parents, Ava, or one of her aunts and uncles, so like Charles and Diane and them. As they carried out royal engagements throughout the year, Alice May started representing her family at several smaller engagements on her own when she turned 15 and she will continue to take on more and more royal duties as she gets older until she becomes becomes full-time working royal when she turns 18 or after she's done with university if she goes. Alice May will soon take priority over Ava for royal engagement since she is the future queen. Ava would still be attending engagements, just much less of them. Anyway, the point is Ava has not been needed as much. So that's been going on on top of some things going on with her kids and grandkids, which I'm about to get into. So a couple months ago, Diana told Ava that her and Abraham plan to travel with Vincent more. I think that they've always wanted to travel and Vincent is no longer a newborn, so he's old enough to travel, and they are planning on being gone for long periods of time. So Ava is like, okay, so I'm not going to be seeing my daughter and my grandson as much anymore. And then, of course, Bellatrix lives in Sulani with Nohea and Samaria, so she doesn't get to see them as much either. And then also the past couple months, Ava and Fallon have not been getting along as much recently. They have been butting heads a lot, mostly having to do with how Felix and Cambridge are being raised and Fallon has always been very adamant about making sure Felix and Cambridge are not spoiled, that they do not grow up spoiled. And I do think that Ava tends to spoil her grandkids probably a bit more than the average grandparent does. And of course, Fallon and Ava come from very different worlds. Also, Ava has kind of been hinting about their future education and they're still young, they're still toddlers, but hinting about these two, like these great tutors that will be great to tutor them at home um, when they are ready to be homeschooled. And Fallon is like, well, I mean, Charles and I have already talked and we want our kids to go to private school and we don't want them to be homeschooled. So one night Fallon just kind of put her foot down and she's like, look, I appreciate you caring so much about the kids, but this is what Charles and I have already discussed that they're going to be going to private school. And Ava was kind of like, well, maybe when they get older, you guys might change your mind. And Fallon's like, no, like I'm bringing this up now. We're deciding this now and letting you know this now so this isn't an issue later and Ava and her started getting into a bit of a heated argument and I think Fallon did try to be as respectful as possible like her mother-in-law is the dowager queen but Fallon is not afraid to speak her mind especially when it comes to her kids and I also think Ava might have taken it a little bit more personal than Fallon had intended as well so of course Charles took Fallon's side too but before that night before that argument that Fallon and Ava got into a couple days before Ava and Dean had run into each other and Ava was having a bad night. She had just 
found out that Diana and Vincent and Abraham were going to be traveling a lot and among other things too. So she was having a bad night, Dean could kind of tell, so they got a bite to eat and nothing happened that night, but they both did start opening up to each other. Dean started telling her about how he's been feeling after Philip died. So that was a couple days before the argument and then the night of the argument with Ava and Fallon, Ava got really upset afterwards. She went home, she called Dean and Dean came over and she started confiding in Dean and one thing kind of led to another and things got intimate. So that's how the affair started. And then after that, they did keep seeing each other. Also, I want to be very clear that I'm not making excuses for either of them. I'm just like giving you guys some insight about what's been going on. They've calmed down. Amira and Evangeline have calmed down. I think Amira would, if she's trying to talk some sense into Evangeline and I think she would understand, like I think Ava's trying to make excuses for herself and saying like, look, I just, I had a moment of weakness, like that kind of thing. And Amira, I think would understand a moment of weakness. I mean, she had one, she kissed Makai when she was going through a lot before Cedric was born, when she was married to Jabari. Ugh, that was a mess, but she did talk to Jabari about it. And that happened. I think Amira would understand a moment of weakness, but I think she would make it a point to Evangeline like, but the fact is you're still seeing him. You guys have been seeing each other for a month. And it's just a mess. Cause I did like, you guys saw how high of a relationship Dean and Ava have. Ultimately, I think if Dean had to choose, he would pick Leilana. Like he's not just like, oh, okay, you know about me and Evangeline now and leaves. Obviously they're also like queen and prince consort of Sulani. So divorce like isn't really an option for that. Like Leilana, that's her thing. And she's like, okay, divorce isn't an option for us. And that'll be more of something we will see later. Anyway, I, I think Amir is gonna calm down a bit. I'm losing my voice. <laughs> Cheer up, parent. Interesting. Mm. Where, what does that do? I've never seen that before. But I think what Ava is saying, like Amira still doesn't think it's okay, but she sees now what Ava's going through and she didn't realize Ava was going through this. And I think she's kind of telling her like, you could have reached out to me <laughs> or said something. Also think that, okay, so one, oh, I'm gonna start wrapping this up, uh, this episode up a bit, but I, one, I think that Amira, so I think they've come down. I think Amira would offer for Evangeline to stay with them at the palace a bit. So she's not alone. Because I, I think that's the big thing is how alone Ava feels. So I think that Amira is like picking up on that. Also, th I'm not, okay, I'm not, this is a tough one. I'm not saying that this next thing is a, the right decision at all, but I, I think this would be Amira's decision. And I think this would be what she would tell Evangeline. I think she would tell her like, you better hope that Bellatrix doesn't find out about this because she would be so hurt. And I think she's making Evangeline promise not to see Dean anymore. And like, if they're not seeing each other anymore, I think Amira kind of thinks like there's no point in hurting Bellatrix by telling her if, if it's not a thing anymore, if that makes sense. Anyway, it's still an offensive conversation. I'm trying to get them to calm down a bit. I think we're pretty much gonna end this episode here. Like they're, they're calming down, but for now, I think that's enough for one episode. So yeah, we're gonna end this episode here. So that was a lot. Again, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. There will also be way more detailed story posts about what's going on. So questions might be answered in there, but if not, I will answer them in the next episode. If you enjoyed this, make sure you hit that like button. It really helps me out when you guys do that. So I appreciate it and I will see you guys